everybody, welcome to Let's Look at Weird Worlds Returns to Infinite Space. This is a game that actually came out while I was away at PAX East, and I, I checked it out because I was running through like all the stuff that had been released on Steam while I was gone, which is not that much, you know, because it was like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, when not a lot of games come out, usually those are towards the earlier part of the week, but this one piqued my interest because it had uh, a lot of words that I really like. It had words, you know, like sci-fi, space combat, Roguelike, their words, not mine, and, and there are certainly roguelike, or roguelike-like, or like roguelike-like elements. Like, I roguelike you, but I don't roguelike-like you. In any case, um, this is basically the easiest way to uh, kind of approximate this game and explain it to somebody who's never seen it before, is that it's kind of like FTL, um, but the combat is much more kind of real-time strategy game-ish, as opposed to, you know, management-type combat, I guess, which is, uh, for lack of a better word, what I would describe FTL as. Uh, but we're gonna get started here. This is available on Steam for, uh, I believe it's $10. I picked it up in the opening week sale for $7.50. In any case, this is our space dock, which I could not possibly make up. Uh, and, you know, you can give your captain a name, you can give your starship a name. I'm Captain Dick Punch, uh, captaining the poop. These are both... FTL references as much as I hate to be pandering. Uh, and we can change a number of variables. So we can select our ship, we can be a science vessel, we can be a pirate corvette, or a Terran frigate. Um, we can set our map size, and map size actually changes the number of years that we're going to be doing uh, a mission. These are, it's, it's kind of like a roguelike, but it's, you're, you're doing kind of like cargo, not smuggling, but you're, you're basically on a mission to collect and bring back cargo. So at the end of 20 years or 30 years, you have to come back to where you started and then retire. And it's not really about beating like a final boss or anything like that. It's more about getting a high score. It's a little unusual in that sense. Um, we can also change nebula mass. I'm going to keep it on less. Basically, nebulas are just frustrating to move through. Uh, and enemy strength normal is fine. And you know what? Let's play as a, a, a Terran frigate here and we will start up the game. So I'm not going to read everything here. There is a lot of text in this game, much more than in a game like FTL. At least it comes in bigger walls, perhaps more infrequently though. Um, so we are going to just continue onwards here. Basically, he's just telling us that we are on uh, a mission to collect as much cargo as possible for these guys. So we can close or retire. We're going to close. Uh, the entire story and gameplay is, called, is told through those text prompts. So we're just going to take a look around the map here and I'm going to explain what's going on. So we're starting down here at uh, Glory. And our main goal, or our main way of kind of interacting with the game, is going to be kind of flying into these star systems here and seeing what we get there. Everyone is going to kind of give us a decision, or an encounter, or maybe we'll pick up some items. Uh, and we're going to basically try to not die, amass as much good cargo as possible, upgrade our ships so we can take out bigger and bigger ships. Uh, and then, you know, in 10,950 days, as you can see on the bottom here, we're going to want to be back at glory so we can retire. If we're late, then we're going to have to pay late fees. It's, it's a very weird setup for a game. It's not altogether terrible by any stretch of the imagination, but it is unusual. So, uh, first things first, we're just going to start moving around here uh, throughout our galaxy. And so we've gotten our first kind of interface that we're going to be dealing with a lot here. So, usually it'll tell us something about the planet. So the planet is Tombstone. We could rename it ourselves if we wanted to, to something like, I don't know, Wombstone? What can I say? I'm not a very creative guy. Um, dead planetoids are often small, very cold, airless, and sterile. Life as we conceive it to be cannot exist on worlds so barren and forlorn. So, it's just giving us a little bit of flavor text around the planet. We can also see that there is a, um, research station here. Again, this is a little bit more flavor text about what's going on in, uh, or what has gone on, I guess, on Wombstone. And there's an item, so this is basically your standard encounter. You go to a planet, you read a little about it if you so choose, and you will see uh, some kind of item that you can take or trade for or do something with. So we've gotten a crystal fish. They are not edible, but we can still put it in our cargo regardless, and maybe we'll be able to do something with, later, with it later. Sometimes we can trade our cargo to other kind of pirates or smugglers, what have you. Uh, sometimes they will trigger kind of random events as we move throughout the, the galaxy here, and sometimes, you know, we can sell them, sometimes we can use them, they'll have like a, a summoning ability or something like that. Okay, so here we have a fission torpedo pod. We'll talk about the, uh, weapons in a second. Uh, when we perhaps get a better one, because that one was not altogether that good. So most of the time when I'm moving throughout the galaxy here, I don't really uh, read too much about what's going on. I just try to click on the item and take it with me, because otherwise you would be spending like an hour per run just reading the flavor text. And I've seen a lot of this flavor text over and over again, like Jumbo Shrimp, uh, I've seen many, many times. But that's okay, because you know when you're playing a kind of lunch... Ooh, I don't know if we want to fly through this. Let's go back. Sometimes there are undocumented black holes. Obviously, if you fly through them, uh, not even light can escape, so you can't escape either. So this is our first kind of uh, time that we've come across an occupied star system. So we get a hyperwave radar, which basically tells us uh, what we're dealing with here. Obviously, you can see there's like 16 
uh, tiny ships and then four relatively big ones. We're probably about the same size as one of these somewhat larger ones here. So I think it's smart for us to avoid this. So, you know, we can come back later. Maybe we have a better ship or a, a wider flotilla, shall we say. Strange Quark Projector. A short-range beam weapon which emits a throbbing stream of strange quarks which convert ordinary matter into strange matter with disastrous results. Okay. Let's explain the cargo and inventory system here. So everything in our cargo hold has a shape. Square things can't be used, like they can't be applied to our ship, but everything else uh, has the possibility to kind of be slotted in somewhere on our ship based on its um, shape, I guess you could say. So I'm just gonna look at these that we have, right now in our kind of weapon slots, we have Neptunium rail guns. I'm just trying to see how much these uh, are worth each. So those are worth two coins each. So if I take off one of those and then put on the strange quark projector here, uh, this is worth three coins, and this has been the way that I've basically approximated which items are better and when I should upgrade and not upgrade. Uh, so yeah, I just look at basically like the uh, the value of it over here, and if X is better than Y, uh, then I will replace Y with X, if that makes sense. So that wasn't a huge upgrade, obviously, but we'll continue moving throughout our uh, galaxy here, hoping to come across some combat that we can actually deal with here. So we've encountered an alien race. Uh, Usually that race, uh, I forget what they were called, the like Klanaths or something like that, they are traitors. Not traitors, like treasonous, but traitors in that uh, they will trade you items for other items. So we have uh, some items here that I could pick up, so you know what, why not try to trade something we don't want, like this railgun, for a hyperfoam injector, which we can then slot into our ship in one of these circle spots. This should, uh, you know, these give us certain benefits, like if we upgrade our engines, it might increase our speed, which is what's listed here under Deep Space and Nebula. This is why I hate Nebula so much, because we're so slow through those right now. Uh, and maybe we can trade the Fission Torpedo Pod for a mnemonic sequencer. I have no idea what impact these have. We can look at the text. Let's see. It, it attempts to calculate optimum battle strategies during combat. Uh, as for what the, you know, actual effect on that on a mathematical level within a battle is, I have no idea. But that's kind of cool uh, that those are obscured. It, it makes it perhaps more difficult, I can imagine, and perhaps a little bit more frustrating for a lot of people. I don't think we want to deal with this guy either. Um, but at the same time, it also makes it perhaps a little bit more variable, or it takes a little bit longer to kind of know what's going on. It's like Dreadmore, you know how in Dreadmore you don't always know what's going on? Uh, and, and that kind of makes it a little bit more replayable, in the sense that you have to figure out what's going on, uh, with all of the elements and potions and, you know, contraptions that you run into. Okay, we've come across the Zorg, a diminutive biped with an oversized hairless head, physically weak. They possess bizarre mental capacities. Let's see if he's gonna join us. Oh, we can hire him. So you, you can also hire, um... Mercenaries. These mercenaries will become part of your flotilla, uh, which I'll explain in a second. I'm gonna see if I can give him something like a Chaos Weevil. He has no use for this product. Hmm, does he have a use for this fish? Uh, no. Okay, so we're not gonna be able to hire this guy yet, sadly. Uh, but hopefully we'll be able to go up to Chi up here and we'll get, uh, you know, some kind of weapon that we can give to this guy to get him to join our flotilla. Because I'd like to talk more about what's up with this flotilla type system. Uh, we picked up this mirror. I'm not going to worry too much about what it's all about. I'm probably just going to try to give it to this dude down here. Because as we build up our flotilla... Alright, he likes it. He likes it enough, anyway. You get There's like three different kind of outcomes here. You can say the mercenary would prefer something more practical or tactical or, you know, what have you, depending on their uh, intentions. Uh, but they'll accept it regardless. They'll say they're very pleased and they'll accept it or they'll say we have no use for this. But anyway, now he's become part of our flotilla. So now you can see we have two ships uh, that we're kind of taking around with us. This is going to make us much stronger in combat, as you might imagine. We could also uh, change our formation if we wanted to. Like, we could move this guy up here. So when we go into combat, like, he'll be in front of us. Or we can, you know, we put him behind us. Anyway, I'm just going to leave him at the side for now. It doesn't really matter all that much as we are making our way throughout the galaxy here. I'm going to... We still have a ton of time. Like, 8,000 days. This will go by pretty fast. Like, even though this is a 30-year level or 30 years setup that I've got going on, it'll probably finish in, um, you know, I, I would estimate 20 minutes maybe, 25. We the Exalted Clack are, wish to parlay with your humble race, we offer worthy goods and services in trade for technology. Okay, that's fine by me. Uh, they've given us a multi-bot repair drone, which we actually might be able to just slot onto our ship here if we click view systems. Uh, it does replace something though, so let's get our cargo out here, and this is where you start, uh, seeing, this is a hyperfoam injector, is a two-star thing. Uh, the one that we just got, the multi-bot repair drone, I believe was a three-star, yeah, or three-coin upgrade. So I'm going to put that on there instead. Uh, and I'm going to see if I can maybe trade with these guys. Uh, the trading system is very, very simple. We can look at anything, uh, and in general, they will just trade one for one a lot of the time. By the way, we can use this beacon that we just got to kind of summon these Clackar guys to trade with us whenever we want. Uh, I wonder if I could trade, like, the Chaos Weevil for maybe, um... 
What would be something good? Oh, this tachyon ray gun seems awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll set that up and we'll replace our fission uh, missile rack with that. Let's, you know, just keep setting up some even better uh, weapons here. And I'm just going to see. Sometimes these overlap in terms of their abilities. So let's just check out the matrix shield for a second. So we have two star shield. We can trade that for... Uh, is there a better shield? Nebular plow seems really good. Anti-gravitron shunt. Let's trade it for the nebular plow. Actually, let's trade um this for the nebular plow and see if I can put that on. Yeah, that didn't hurt us at all. So our ship is actually getting awesome. I didn't even look at the tooltip for that. I just saw how good it looked. Uh, projects a chevron shade force field of polarized anti-neutrinos that push nebular matter aside. That means we should go faster, I think, um, through a, a nebula. Or maybe we just destroy the nebula as we come up to it. Is that like a... Yeah, it's a black monolith. Um, let me check out the... Uh, tooltip here. Uh, its origin and purpose are a total mystery. I can't resist it though. Let's trade our fish for the monolith. Uh, and maybe we'll get some sweet kind of, uh, you know, uh, it, it, encounter or random instance as a result of that. Sorry, I'm just tr focusing on trading right now. There we go. Our ship is like totally set up now. The thing that I just bought, I guess, tells us, uh, if I look at the tooltip, it gives us the energy signature of all starships within the sector, so that's worth a lot of coin. But beyond that, now I can see what uh, what uh, kind of star systems here are occupied and which ones are not. By the way, the dude that I hired, this mercenary, he has a special ability which allows him to actually fold space. So by doing that and getting this kind of really cheesy <laughs> effect, uh, I can fold space and then uh, travel without wasting any time. Now we could get involved with some combat here. I would like to perhaps build a little bit of a better flotilla first. Uh, because I want to make sure, like, combat has been pretty rough for me so far. I've only succeeded in combat twice, and I've died every other time. Plasma clo Coil Cloaker. Let's see what this replaces. Um, my guess is maybe Mnemonic Sequencer it replaces. And it's much better anyway, so, so we're good with that. Um, so let's keep, keep folding here. We're going to try to find a, a nice light combat section that we can get involved with. Anacon, Anacron Pulse, Ana, Anti-Chronon Pulse Blaster. I apologize for my, uh, apparently speech impediment that I'm dealing with now. But all the, these words I don't deal with on a regular basis. Okay, so we do have another, uh, another pilot has just chosen, chosen to, uh, join our flotilla here. Uh, Ripcord O'Reilly. So we're building up a pretty solid setup here. I'm just continuing to fold here because it saves us a lot of time. That's why I really like getting that guy as a mercenary. And we're just amassing cargo right now. This cargo will basically give us score when we go back to glory. Which I'm not going to do for a while yet. But here we go. We're going to have a chance to engage in some combat. I'm going to choose not to because they, they seem a little bit stronger. Rest assured, at some point, uh, we will find some ships that I'm comfortable taking down. You've got to be very cautious here uh, about the kind of enemies that you choose to engage with. Because, you know, if you die, you die. You can retreat, but... Uh, oftentimes that is not good enough. Reactionless thruster, that actually seems awesome. Reactionless thruster, sounds like my ex-girlfriend. hi -o! Anyway. Alright, so I put the reactionless thruster in there. I'm not sure. It, it's a lot better than our pulse detonation thruster. What's the special ability? Um, beats me. We constantly fall forward at high sublight speeds. That seems fantastic. Let's make our way down here to PAX, which seems fitting considering I was just there recently. Uh, we're probably going to want to turn back because otherwise that's black hole will absolutely eat us so let's instead make our way up here and time is gonna go you know pretty quickly as you can see down there at the bottom sometimes it takes us a, a few years oh we already went here sometimes it takes us a few years to go uh, where we want to go so we're gonna I guess make our way up to like shrew and alabaster up here we're about halfway through and uh, you know I'd be remiss if I didn't at least show some combat oh my god we're so slow through the nebula we are pushing the nebula out of the way, but it's still slowing us down substantially, as you can see. So that's the halfway point of our mission, as you can see. Uh, there we go. We've made our way through there. That took a long time. And you know what? I feel like this is where we are finally going to be able to fight. Uh, so let's uh, go to engage here, and we'll see. So they are Muktians, a highly intelligent yellow, yellow slug-like being. Muktians usually spend their long lives deep underground. The Explorer cast has returned to the surface and recently developed space travel. Okay, we're going to fight them. Oh, I didn't want to leave it. No, I didn't want to leave. We have pushed the nebula out of the way. I, I didn't read that fast enough. Okay, we're going to go back. It's going to take us like two years to get there, which is fucking silly. But, um, so we're going to go back and fight them, basically. Engage. Stay. Okay. So we're going to see how this works. Basically, the way this works is it's like an RTS where you, um, control all of the units in your flotilla individually. I'm not sure. I guess the camera changes dynamically as we move along. Uh... I'm just trying to keep my guys fairly close together for now. Well, all we do is we like click on them and basically move them 
uh, to wherever we see fit. So I'm just keeping this guy basically patrolling. There are other, you know, we could have them fire, for example. I don't really want them to fire there, which is probably going to do regardless. And when these guys get closer, we should have a chance to engage. So let's uh, see if we can have these guys perhaps take out these smaller fighters first. So obviously this blue shield uh, that you saw was the uh, like kind of energy shield of the enemy. Whereas the uh, green shield is their available health. So we're going to try not to die here. We have taken out one of the ships. We're going to see if we can take out the second one. We're still doing fine for health, I would say. This ship is going to die very quickly. And again, we're, we're losing a little bit, but not all that much. Then we're going to focus on the big one here, the frigate. Uh, and, you know, we have a pretty solid assortment of weapons here, but it looks like we're going to die, actually. It's going to be close. Our shields are back up. I think we're going to be able to kill it. Okay, we did. But that was a little scary. Like, we, we very nearly died there. That was much closer than any combat I've gotten engaged with before. And we should uh, heal a little bit, I guess. Okay, this Golden Nat. The intricately wrought Golden Nat is one of the smallest automatons ever constructed. The Nat was actually a spying device used by Lord Fomax. It was created by the Mad Artificer Zebnoth. All right. I have no idea what that means, but we do have it in our inventory now. Um, our ship is in a, a pretty rough spot here. I guess our... Tachyon ray gun has been destroyed, maybe? Is that why it's glowing red? I'm not totally sure. Maybe we'll replace that with our um, Antichron Pulse Blaster for now because this is hurt. I don't know, man. Did I do that? Tachyon ray gun now seems fine. I have no idea. I guess, yeah, I played this for like an hour. There's a couple mechanics of the game I'm still very much fuzzy with. Uh, oh, I should click repair hull, I guess. Ah, Esmeralda stole something from us. She's like a random instance, basically, that will just steal one of our items. Um... So I just, I just took six days to repair our hull there, which seems like a pretty solid course of action, considering doing anything often takes on the order of like several hundred days. Uh, I think we might want to avoid, avoid that for now, because uh, I don't know if I did all that well in the last combat. I did worse than I expected, at least. Oh, yeah, and we definitely want to avoid that. So I don't know, maybe if you're better at the game, you can eventually get to a point where you can take out enemies like that, but... Uh, Let's just say I have not gotten to that point yet. Oh, man, we're going to be so slow through this nebula. I hope I can get back without incurring late fees, he said, as if I was going to Blockbuster or something. We would lose this combat as well. So maybe this might be a good time for us to just try to make it back to uh, glory in time for us to not incur late fees. Remember, this is like a score attacking game. Our goal is not necessarily to uh, beat any kind of final boss. It's just to uh, amass as much cargo and money as possible. Which oftentimes involves killing enemies so that you can get, uh, you know, whatever they are holding on to. Oh, I guess we have two mnemonic sequences here. I was just seeing if I could give this guy anything better, maybe, uh, to make his ship a little bit better. I don't know, though. For the most part, I haven't been upgrading enemy flotillas. Now, this is where we're going to end it, for sure. Uh, and you know what? We should probably just kind of go back there as is, because we're already getting pretty close. Yeah, and he's basically saying, like, hey, you should uh, hurry back now. Otherwise... You're going to be late. So we're early, but there's nothing really else I can do here. So uh, I think we might just want to retire, and they'll ask us if we want to end the game. And we'll hit yes. You know, pretty good score. Not fantastic. Uh, we can see what we got for, like, ships. Uh, our score for ships, diplomacy, life forms, artifacts, technology. I don't know why technology is so high. I'm guessing that's just our, our cargo. Oh, you know what? This is probably what we brought back uh, from his perspective. Because remember, he's buying all this stuff off of us. Anyway. Uh, cool. So that is basically... Weird Worlds, that's the second best I've ever done on a large map, as you can see. Uh, on a medium map, I've had some good scores as well. But uh, this was basically me trying to figure out what the heck I'm supposed to be doing. By the way, like, when it says fail to stop the Kowangi, uh, I think there was, like, a weird instance where basically every planet in the galaxy started exploding. And I didn't stop that in time. But in any case, this is Weird Worlds Return to Infinite Space. In terms of, like, my opinions on this game, it's very unusual because it's not, like, a traditional roguelike, like, um, well, okay, not traditional roguelike. It's not like most roguelike likes, <laughs> like Dungeons of Dreadmore or uh, Spelunky or, you know, uh, FTL, where you're trying to, like, beat a boss at the end and then you get this sense of satisfaction. It's more like a score attacking game, which is a little bit unusual, or a little bit of an unusual formula to be, to be running with this. But in terms of, like, a casual game that you could just play, you know, a game or two of on your lunch break, I think it's totally fine. It feels to me a little bit dated. So I'm not sure if this actually originally came out earlier or something like that. I know Omrecker has been playing like two or three hours of this so far, so he really likes it. Uh, it's a little bit, and I, I hesitate to say pricey, because uh, I don't know if that leads to entitlement, but uh, you know, at 10 bucks, uh, it, it's perhaps a little bit expensive for what I will foresee my enjoyment overall out of this game being. It's definitely not my roguelike of choice, 
Uh, but I do enjoy the kind of real-time combat that it has and the fact that it's a little bit more... Not necessarily strategic, but a little bit more text-heavy than something like FTL, which is, you know, I don't know, makes it a little bit more low-key, maybe. A little bit more strategic. Not to say that FTL doesn't require strategy. Anyway, I've qualified everything that I've said. Basically, what I'm getting at, Weird, Weird Worlds uh, Return to Infinite Space is a little bit of an unusual type of game, but uh, I enjoy it nonetheless, despite it being kind of a mixed bag. But yes, consider this a mild thumbs up or uh, mild positive recommendation. Anyway, if you want to check out this game on Steam, it is available. Uh, for $7.50 for its opening week, which I think is only going to last for a few more days if it's not over by the time this video goes up. There will be a link in the video description to pick it up on the store page. It'll be $10 normally. In any case, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.